Skirmish games are all the rage right now. They allow players to collect smaller warbands and play fun, shorter, more snappy games than is perhaps the case with larger wargaming systems. My first foray into skirmish games was the 2018 version of Kill Team. I had a blast making new kill teams from a bunch of factions. But with the newer updated version, I didn't get the same vibe. The customization of the squads was a lot more limited. That put me off picking up a copy of the rules. Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong and if it's worth playing. So I took my ball and went home. I left the 41st millennium and journeyed back into Middle Earth. But then something caught my eye recently. One page rules grimdark firefight. This simple rule set allows players to collect not 40k inspired armies with even more customization than the Kill Team 2018 edition. One of these firefight teams took my fancy immediately. It was the Human Inquisition, which draws several parallels between the warbands you see in games like Ink 28. The prospect of making this warband was far too good to pass up. So I decided to use all of the spare components from the previous Kill Team projects and bash them together to make a Human Inquisition team with no additional cost to myself. I'm Joe from Windrush Wargamers, and here's how I made an Inquisitor and her retinue for free. In the Warhammer 40,000 Legendarium, Inquisitors are agents of the Inquisition with extreme power. They fall into multiple Ordos, including but not limited to the Ordo Xenos to purge humanity of alien influence, Ordo Hereticus to stamp out unauthorized heretical warp witchcraft, and the Ordo Malleus to rid the Empire of demonic incursions. The Ordo Malleus was the Ordo that I wanted to explore in this project, inspired by this absolute chad Ordo Malleus Inquisitor. The base of this conversion would be my brother's spare Neve Black Talon from the Stormcast Eternals faction in Age of Sigma. She's big, imposing, and the sprinting pose has a really nice fluid motion to it. I really like the lion motifs, as well as the metal collar. The old girl was a bit broken, bless her, missing her head and her right arm. After gluing the two halves together, I covered the slotter tab with the Grey Knight shield. I then clipped away the bag from her hip, using some snippers, and added this book. This was to get the Inquisitor symbol on the model. The head, in my opinion, always has the biggest impact on a miniature. I went back and forth, but in the end I landed on this Grey Knight Terminator head. It has a very knightly silhouette, but also the targeting scopes and eye lenses gives me everything that I need. Next, I needed a quintessentially grim dark weapon. So I again utilised the Grimdark Terminator's kit for a power sword. The blade was removed along with the pommel and they were pinned in place. With the sword in place I moved on to the ranged weapon. After much deliberation I went for with a spare bolter taken from the Death Watch kit. This fit the tactical style and also carried the Inquisition symbol on the side. At this point I took a step back just to kind of take in the whole silhouette of the model and I could see that the head was looking a little bit too large when compared to the shoulders. So I decided to pad it out. Get it? The shoulder pad was again taken from the Grey Knight Terminator's kit. Okay, I was definitely liking the updated silhouette now. But it needed a little grimdark cherry on top. Of course, I moved over to the trusty servo skull. Attaching it to the shoulder blades underneath the fur pelt. The green stuff sculpting was very minor on this one, just filling in gaps and bulking out the fur to fill the voids, and a pretty small purity seal on the back just because. His ears all finished up, really like her. I chose green for the colour scheme. This was to match my Sisters of Battle. This way I could use Godfrey de Montbach and Pius Vaughan in this inquisitorial retinue and they would fit perfectly. Speaking of the retinue, I needed to move on to her followers. What is more grimdark in the 41st millennium than servitors? 
Servitors are typically criminals or heretics that have been lobotomized to completely remove their free will, then enhanced with grotesque cybernetic appendages. Once they're trapped in this mechanical nightmare, they serve the Imperium of Man, performing simple tasks like carrying heavy objects or opening doors. Some, like the ones I wish to make here, are outfitted with heavy weaponry and forced to fight the enemies of the Imperium. I would first need the base for my conversions, to hint at their former lives. I chose some leftovers from the Corpse Grinder cult from the Necromunda game. They have large muscular frames and they're wearing industrial style clothes. After gluing them together, I wanted to move on to the next biggest feature, the guns. These were once again taken from the Grey Knight Terminator sprue. They fit pretty well, but I had to make some alterations using my clippers and my hobby knife to make sure they fit perfectly. Aside from the weapons, I needed to make them look more mechanical so they read as servitors, in particular the head. For this, I reached for the leftovers from my Adeptus Mechanicus Rust Stalkers. These heads have plenty of unnerving cables and pipes. One of the Corpse Grinder Cult poses was missing an arm, which was another opportunity to add some mechanical gribbly bits. Removing this mechanical arm from this Poxwalker kit, it was just like making a real servitor as I was able to crudely attach it to the stump. The last step was to spruce these two up, as these two weren't just any old servitors, they were in the service to a fancy schmancy inquisitor, and I'll need to decorate them with various iconography from leftover sprues. Practically no green stuff work was employed here, just the odd patch to blend the kits together, like the skin when it's making contact with the pipes for example. Next up on the cutting mat was the squats, which I'll be using as acolytes or bodyguards for the Inquisitor. I chose squats for one reason only, they are unique and I have several heroic scale dwarves from the Stone Realms Rambuck Raiders kit. These were left over from my Iron Hills Goat Rider conversions. The first point of call to update these to the 41st millennium would be the weaponry. This Grey Knight Terminator halberd fits the bill with the long flowing purity seal. It was trimmed down and pinned in place on top of a dwarven spear shaft. Other weapons like the Imperial Guard Power Fist, Power Swords from the Rust Orcas kit were also employed. For the ranged weapons I used these Uzi type weapons from the Rust Orcas kit. I trimmed them down to make them a bit more stumpy to fit the Dwarven scale. To finish them up I slapped on a few things from the Sisters of Battle kit and this Vox backpack from the Imperial Guard set. The added benefit of using these is that they have a more renaissance vibe than a lot of the fantasy and now 40k dwarves have. 40k have revisited the space dwarves with the leagues of Votan recently, but other squats do exist within the wider world and as part of the Imperium as seen by the Necromunda range. I find the leagues of Votan and the Necromunda characters feel a bit more cyberpunk than renaissance. Quite often this style can be seen in Inc. 28. It seems to borrow a lot of this style to emphasise the grim dark aesthetics. And these minis have them in spades. Look at the caps, look at the feathers. Last up for the retinue, I wanted some death cult assassins. These gals are creepy, fanatically pious killers. Obsessed with depraved ritualistic death. Not people you'd want to bring home to see your parents. They have a very unique look that would be hard to replicate. One area that jumped out to me almost immediately was the fetish style leather and the high heel boots. 
Unfortunately, I had some spare Escher gang members from Necromunda, complete with the skin-tight armoured leggings and built-in high heels. The Death Cult, as the name suggests, are a bunch of unsavoury reprobates. So, with the body sorted, I needed to give them some sinister heads to introduce that unsettling tone. There's this great mask from the Ruststalkers kit. It gives me a Carl Cronin from Hellboy vibe. Something about the lack of features gives me shivers, and this contrasts nicely against the feminine shape of the body. The next mask followed the similar theme, but I wanted them to be unique, so I chose this one from the Slaves of Darkness box. Has a more skeletal appearance, and this perfectly encapsulates the fanatical cult aspect. The cult assassins are armed with swords, so I took ones from the Impestor Scions and the Ruststalkers kits. All the retinue was painted up and based on marble, this way it looked like a ruined cathedral. And here's how they look finished up. I'm really pleased that I was able to make these out of scraps I had lying around the house. Let me know what you think of them in the comments below. I could make inquisitors for the other Ordos potentially, and I have an idea for a demon host, but I would have to shell out for some more parts, so let me know if you'd be interested. We are planning to make some more 40k stuff, we have an Elder X type video in the works, you can also look back through our back catalogue, we've made loads of 40k conversions now looking at units from the lore, and we've had some fun making things like the Batman's Rogue Gallery for the Eldar Harlequin, so check them out if you're interested. Like the video if you like it, dislike the video if you disliked it, subscribe for more stuff, I've been Joe from Windrush Wargamers, and with any luck I'll see you in the next video, thanks very much for your time.